Welcome to the Bible in the News. This past month, the Republican candidacy contender for U.S. presidential elections, Mike Huckabee, has made several bold statements about Israel. On a radio program last month, he declared, uh, This president's foreign policy is the most speckless uh, in American history. Uh, he's so naive, he would trust the Iranians, and he would take the Israelis and basically march them to the door of the oven. This is the most hideous thing. This Iran deal should be rejected by both Democrats and Republicans in Congress and by the American people. I, I think we, we forget that the Iranians have never kept a deal in 36 years under the Ayatollah. There's no reason to think that they'll suddenly start doing it. I read the entire thing. We gave away the whole farm. It's, uh, it's got to be stopped. The bold statement is a very politically incorrect statement, yet represents an inconvenient truth that world politicians don't want to discuss. Is Mike Huckabee a maverick that is out of touch, or does he have his finger on the pulse of what is actually going on in the streets? Well, the Bible clearly outlines the truth of the matter, identifying Iran as an enemy of Israel that will join the Russian coalition for the Battle of Armageddon, and the invasion of Israel, as Ezekiel 38 states in chapter 38, verses 8 to 9. After many days thou shalt be visited, talking of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, the Russian host, in the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword, and is gathered out of many people, against the mountains of Israel, which have always been waste, but is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely all of them. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, thou and all thy bands, and many people with thee. Well, who are the many people that join this party? We read in verse 5 that Persia, or Iran, Ethiopia, and Libya are with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Well, is Huckabee out of line with his assessment of the situation? Is the Bible misleading as to where things will really end up? Well, this week, in a follow-up interview with Ynet Daily, Huckabee reiterated his claim when he said, uh, The United States has vowed uh, repeatedly, as has Israel, that uh, the Iranians are not going to acquire a nuclear device. We've just now entered into an agreement in which they inevitably will. We've given them $150 billion of unfrozen assets so they can buy conventional weapons. They've already announced they're going to buy four major anti-aircraft devices from the Russians. This is a terrorist state, and we are empowering, enabling, and enriching them. Well, the story of Iran's impending purchase of the S-300 air defense missiles hit the news this week. CNN reported the advanced S-300 air defense systems would mean that the U.S. or Israeli warplanes likely couldn't sneak into Iranian airspace if they wanted to bomb Iran's nuclear facilities. Bombing the S-300 radar and missiles first would give the Iranians a warning that an attack would be on the way. The signs that Moscow could soon be completing the sale comes as the United States, Russia, Iran, and four other world powers recently completed a deal curbing Tehran's nuclear program. End quote. Well, the scriptures identify the target area of the Russian coalition as being the mountains of Israel. The prophet Joel identifies the area of interest as being Judah and Jerusalem. We read in Joel chapter 3, verses 1 to 2, For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, which happened in 1967, I will also gather all nations, and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and will plead with them there for my people, and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Well, Zechariah reiterates this understanding, identifying the gathering of the nations against the city of Jerusalem. We read in chapter 14, verse 2, For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and half the, city, or the, the house is rifled, the women shall be ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. So the scriptures clearly identify the heartland of Israel throughout the Bible as being Judea and Samaria. This is where most of the narrative of the Bible history takes place, both in the Old and the New Testament. The prophets identify it as the area of controversy in the time of the end. This geographical area was also spotlighted this week due to Mike Huckabee's trip to Israel when he visited Shiloh and made the following statement reported by the Jerusalem Post.
Uh, one, to show solidarity with the country that most reflects uh, a mirror image of the American spirit. And also to uh, show solidarity with the Israeli people and uh, to show their extreme disgust with uh, any deal with Iran. Once again, I, I would think that if you're going to visit Israel, you should visit all of Israel, and that would include, uh, include Judea and Samaria. As far as specifically visiting Shiloh and the West Bank, he went on to state, I recognize Judea and Samaria as part of Israel, and I believe that it's uh, most important that uh, we realize that there are more Jews living in uh, Judea and Samaria uh, than most people ever realize, and that uh, those numbers are significant. Um, it's an important part of the security of Israel, and so I'm uh, not in, in the least concerned about uh, coming to any part of Judea and Samaria. Well, these comments were followed up by an interview on Israel's Ynet Daily, where Huckabee, responding to questions from an Israeli journalist, stated, uh, I was in uh, Shiloh just last night. Uh, that was the capital of Israel 3,500 years ago. And, and to somehow say that there is no connection that uh, Jews have to Shiloh is, is bizarre. I mean, uh, there's more connection that uh, Jews have to Shiloh uh, than Americans have to Manhattan, which has only been a 400-year relationship. Uh, Shiloh goes back 3,500 years. On the issue of a Palestinian state, Huckabee came out with a statement at odds with current American, European, and United Nations policy, stating, Of course I would love to see peace. Uh, nobody wants war. Nobody wants conflict. Uh, nobody wants... Uh, I was here a, a year ago when uh, three young teenagers were murdered. Nobody wants to see that. I visited in the home of one of those uh, murdered teenagers, uh, one of the Israelis who was uh, killed. Nobody wants to see that kind of violence anywhere in the world. But if we're going to have peace in the Middle East or peace anywhere, you can't have it if one of the sides has not yet acknowledged the right of Israel to exist and to have a safe and secure homeland. On the settlements in Judea and Samaria, he stated, Well, I think the question is, uh, d does Israel have a right to build neighborhoods? Let's be specific. Do they have a right to build bedrooms for the expanding number of people who are coming here to make Aliyah? To, or do they have a right to uh, make sure that their people have a secure uh, land that they can defend? I, I don't know why anybody who has ever existed on this earth would think that somehow they should surrender that. And every time historically they give up land for peace, they lose the land and they lose peace. They don't get either one. Yeah. I mean, this is Israel's decisions to make. I'm not going to counsel or advise them. Uh, but neither will I condemn Israel for taking every measure possible uh, to make a, a good home for its people, even in the land of Judea and Samaria. The scriptures have designated Jerusalem as the capital of a nation of Israel since David moved it there from Hebron. God chose Jerusalem as the place his name would be put. It is described by God in the book of Kings as Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen to put my name there. 1 Kings 11 verse 36. Well, no Western country has its embassy in Jerusalem because they don't recognize it as the capital of Israel. The Vatican has even declared it to be an international city. Well, Huckabee would change that if he became president. In the same interview, he stated, uh, I think it's uh, the capital of Jerusalem designated by the Israeli government, and the United States should respect that. Uh, we don't insist that the Israelis have their uh, embassy in New York or that they have it in St. Louis or Los Angeles. Uh, they put their embassy where the U.S. capital is. Uh, last time I checked, and I've been here many, many times over the past 42 years, the Israeli seat of government uh, is Jerusalem. So it would make, for me, perfect sense that the embassy would be located in yeah. Jerusalem. Huckabee's statements over the past week have stirred up quite a controversy. His opinions are not popular with Western politicians, but they are in keeping with the purpose God has outlined and the path the nations will take. Well, whether there is any hope of him becoming president is not ours to prognosticate. We do not read tea leaves, entrails, or opinion polls. We firmly believe that it is the Most High that ruleth in the kingdom of men, giving it to whomsoever he will, and setting up over it the basest of men, as we read in Daniel 4, verse 17. 
who the Almighty will set up in America and why is yet to be seen. What we do know is that the issues of the Bible have been brought into the news once again, issues that the world may shy away from but ultimately will have to face. And we know that there is a time of trouble coming upon the earth as we are told in Zechariah, Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about when they shall be in the siege against both Judah and Jerusalem, the biblical heartland of Judea and Samaria. And in that day I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Zechariah 12 verses 2 to 3. The rest of the story is given to us in verses 6 to 9. Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. And the Lord shall also save the tents of Judah first. In that day, he goes on to say, shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And further on, it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all nations that come against Jerusalem. So we look forward to the kingdom of God being established with Jerusalem as its capital, from where the Lord will roar forth and he will send out his law from Jerusalem. For the Bible in the news, this has been Jonathan Bowen joining you.